Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to talk about my fragrances, my favorite fragrances for the month of October. So at the beginning of the month, I still wanted to wear some floral fragrances and there is one that became quickly one of my obsession. <laughs> uh, I had a sample of it and I quickly bought a full bottle of it when I finished my sample. And this fragrance is Can't Stop Loving You by Kilian. So you may be surprised, I was surprised too <laughs> that I love this fragrance. Uh, let me explain. When I first tried it, honestly, I found it super boring. So I just sprayed it on the paper, smelled it quickly and thought, oh yeah, okay, whatever, another orange blossom fragrance and didn't think about it anymore. Until I came back to my blotter, I mean, I don't know, maybe in the evening or the next day and sniffing, sniffing it, I was like, oh my, this smells so good. What is it? I, I didn't remember what I sprayed before and I thought, how come that, that can't be that fragrance that's completely different from what I smelled yesterday? <laughs> and it was that one. So if you try this fragrance, you definitely need to try for the dry down because the opening is an orange blossom <laughs> fragrance, which can seem quite plain and I don't know, not unique at all and maybe quite boring. But in its evolution, it has something. It has something sensual, it has something addictive almost sexy, I was going to say. Almost something that reminds me of um, Francesca Bianchi fragrances. Not in that sense that is super unique as her fragrances that doesn't have um, her DNA, but there is something in the way she uses these notes, like, uh, is it oak moss or something like that, that creates something super sensual to her fragrance. And this is the impression that I get with this one. So in the evolution, the fragrance is not super sweet. It's less sweet than Love Don't Be Shy, but it's still a sweet orange blossom. But it's not sticky sweet like, um, yes, like Love Don't Be Shy, which is super sweet with this marshmallow note. And it has some, like some added sugar to it on top. It's not the case here. Even if it's supposed to have this note of honey, maybe this is something that makes it also quite sensual and maybe a little bit animalic, but you know, I like animalic notes. So here it's not bothering me. Even if um, honey in fragrances can be something that can be bothering me, but it's not the case here. And what I really love in that one is that in the evolution it's getting more and more incensey. So it has something smoky incensey in that one, like I don't know, I sprayed it on my hair and like in the evening, it was like I, I spent the night uh, near a campfire, but I really love that impression. I really, I really love that and I s couldn't help smelling my, my hair. So definitely one that I really enjoyed uh, and yeah, you know, <laughs> I really like that one. That was a great surprise because, you know, there are not that many Kilian fragrances that I love and this was the case for that one. My next one is another floral fragrance, this time by Dior, and this is J'adore Infinissime. Oh, yes, <laughs> so this one is a bit different to me from the other ones from this range. I mean, there are two or three uh, flankers that I really enjoyed, this one included. I'm not a fan of the regular Dior version, but I feel like the absolute version, the what was it, low version, but not the one that was released this year, but the one that was released in 2017, I guess. And this one, to me, they were the best versions of uh, J'adore. So this one has this um, fruity opening. So you have this uh, blood orange note, which is not as uh, prominent as the one that you can find in Bouquet Encore, for example. Bouquet Encore to me is a bit more, has more edge <laughs> and is more, has more personality to it. This one is to me more easy to love and easy to get. And after that you have a bouquet of flowers, but they are really creamy, well blended. I really enjoy the tubers in that one, which is super creamy, not indolic at all. 
and mix with the other flowers. I guess there is still jasmine and rose, which is the and ylang ylang, of course. To me, this is the usual <laughs> floral notes that you have in uh, Infinissime. And yes, definitely, I like the quality of the flowers here. I really like that this version. I don't know if they changed the quality in between because this was the first release, and to me, the quality was top. Uh, but yeah, still, I really enjoyed that one. Usually, I like to wear uh, tuberose fragrances. I don't know, I have an urge for tuberose uh, in September, maybe because this is the period for tuberose, I don't know. But this time, it was uh, at the beginning of October. My next one is a new fragrance in my collection, and I discovered that one when I went to Paris at the beginning of October, and I really enjoyed it. So this is a new release by uh, Nicolai Parfum, and it is Iris Medicis. Intense. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think there is a regular version, but this is in the intense range. So this one, of course, is an Iris fragrance. It has a very green opening, <laughs> which is something that I really enjoy. I love green fragrances, and this is a green iris to me in the opening, especially. But it has something... Yes, it has a great evolution. I really enjoy the evolution of this fragrance. It has many facets to me. The first time I sprayed it, it reminded me immediately. I don't know why, I don't know why but on my skin, it smelled like a modern version of Fleur Bleu. And this is what I got in the city when I was walking. Uh, they sprayed it on me and I definitely had some vibe <laughs> of Fleur Bleu. Uh, since I didn't have that at all, <laughs> but now I have more something like, I don't know, it reminds me more of a, almost a Chanel fragrance. So if it could be a Chanel fragrance, I guess it would be a mix between number 19 and maybe Belle Respiro, something like that, <laughs> if it can give you a hint of what it smells like. I have something floral and a bit fresh. It's a clean, elegant fragrance, but it has something a little bit more intense, let's say, in the base. Yes, you can feel something woody, comforting, a little bit leathery, but like green leathery, like, the, the type of um, green leatheriness, I wanted to say, that you can have in some uh, fragrances by Memo. Uh, I'm thinking a bit about, uh, is it, you know, not Russian leather, but maybe Italian leather or... Yeah, it has something that, yes, that's reminding me a little bit of Italian leather in that one. Oh, it's really, really pretty. I love the iris in that one. It's powdery, it's musky, but not too, too much because I don't like iris when it's too powdery musky. <laughs> and I don't have that, that here. It's green in the opening, you have some iris and you have a warm base. So this is definitely something that I love in a fragrance. And no surprise that I, I really love that one. Okay, so let's stay into the florals. Uh, my, so we had an orange blossom, a tuberose and an iris. And now we're going to have a rose, <laughs> a rose one. And this is no other than Sa Majesté La Rose by Serge Lutens. So I don't remember if I have already talked about this fragrance on my channel, but this is one I bought maybe at the beginning of the year or uh, for spring. And yes, this is the one when I tried in store and tried all their fragrances, their uh, bouteille de table, so flacon de table, this, this, um, these bottles. This is the one that really get me. I mean, <laughs> I was really surprised because I have many rose fragrances and this one can uh, be considered can be considered as quite a simple rose in the sense that this is a rose soliflor. But when it's well made, and I mean, this one is well made to me, <laughs> I really enjoy that one. So this is to me like, um, in the opening, I have something fruity like like pear to me um, i don't know um, i guess they don't list all their notes but to me it has something like a, s a slightly fruity opening and after that in its evolution it's getting more musky but like super comforting um, and it has some texture some spices i mean it's not something really obvious but i feel like all the different 
I can detect them with all the different ingredients that they added to this fragrance, other than the rose. Uh, really emphasizing the rose. I mean, the rose is the star of the show and all the other ingredients are here to support this beautiful rose. And I feel like it's really fantastic. It's super well made. It's super photorealistic. I mean, I feel like I'm putting my nose into uh, a rose. Like, <laughs> this is exactly the impression that I have, but I have the full, the rose uh, com completely. I mean, uh, it's complete. It has the, the stem, it has the thorns, it has the petals, everything. And I really love that. <laughs> so yes, if you love rose fragrances, this one is not particularly uh, sweet or fresh or fruity. Or mature it has it's a little bit mature to me i would say it's maybe like the a more mature version of rose kabuki rose kabuki has this angelic feel to it like it's uh, i don't know i feel like <laughs> it's like an angelic rose and to me this one is like the more mature version of that one without being too mature it's still really uh, it has some a little bit of freshness too so and it's not a super dark goth gothic rose either so it's just in between it's super realistic and i just really enjoy that one it's just comforting me and it lifts me up it puts me in a good mood uh, i really really enjoy that one so yes this is one that i wear from time to time and yes i wore it also uh, in october my next one is also a rose, but <laughs> completely different. It's a sweet, fruity rose that I reviewed on my channel. And this is La Petite Robe Noire by Guerlain, but this is the absolute version. So I feel like I talked about this one. It was maybe in August or September when it was released. I blind bought that one <laughs> and I didn't regret it because I'm still wearing it. I'm still really enjoying it. It's like a, a little bit more mature, I would, yes, compared to the La Petite Robe Noire because it has uh, more darkness to me with the, the patchouli and the, the leather, even if yeah, the leather note is not that prominent to my nose <laughs> in that one. But I would say it's in between uh, Sherry Wood and La Petite Robe Noire, you know? If Sherry Wood is too much for you, La Petite Robe Noire is not enough, maybe try that one <laughs> in between. Yes, and I, I really like this one, how it smells on me. It has a great sillage, great longevity. I get some compliments also. It uh, suits me really well. It's working really well with my body chemistry. And I feel like, yes, people really enjoy that one on me. So if I want something easy to grab and to wear if I'm going out, this is the one uh, I'm wearing. <laughs> My next one is a Shalimar flanker. Of course, there is a Shalimar flanker here. And this is a millesime version, but not the iris one. This is the Tonka one because, I don't know, when I tried the iris one, it made me want to <laughs> go back to this one. <laughs> and I feel like it's the perfect, perfect moment of the year to wear it. So, yeah, so this one, of course, has uh, an emphasis on the Tonka beans. And the Tonka beans here is super almondy, powdery. It's just delicious. Like, um, it smells like a cuddle. You want to <laughs> to be hugged by your, by your sweater, comfy sweater, cashmere. I don't know, you spray it, uh, this fragrance on you and uh, you're good to go. I feel like uh, this one will comfort me uh, during the, the winter also when it's really cold and... Uh, Yes, you just want to be hugged by your fragrance. <laughs> this is exactly what it's doing to me. So you still feel the Shalimar DNA, but really in the background. I mean, the emphasis here is really on the Tonka beans. It's, it has also some similarities, of course, then with the Tonka Imperial. The Tonka Imperial um, to me has more aromatic notes. You know, they, it has an edge that it doesn't have here and this one is just pleasing to wear. So at some point uh, I just wanted to wear that one. So yes, this was part of uh, also of my favorites of the month. Okay, so my next one is a fragrance by Parfum d'Empire and this is 
Equistrius, Equistrius, <laughs> I don't know how you say it, uh, which is definitely the one that I uh, prefer from this brand. Uh, yes, there is also Le Cri de la Lumière, which I really enjoy, but this one, this one is definitely my favorite. Uh, it's a beautiful iris fragrance, <laughs> so no surprise. Uh, what I found really interesting in that one is that it opens as a cold iris, a cold powdery, slightly violety iris, and in its evolution, it's beginning, it's beginning to to get warmer and warmer. And yes, I really like that. In its different stage also, I had some similarities sometimes with the Dior Homme at some point. I don't know, there is something that reminded me of Dior Homme in it. Maybe the notes, I don't know, because of course it has iris, I guess it has also ombrette or sandalwood or some notes that you can find also in Dior Homme. And it has this powdery chocolate note in the background, like cacao or dark chocolate. It's not like milky or creamy or hyper super gourmand <laughs> to it. And it has something also um, like, I was going to say sweat. Yeah, because it was, um, as the name can suggest, uh, creating the, with the inspiration of horses, <laughs> but hopefully it doesn't smell at all like horses or, um, yes, you know, the, type of smell that um, a horse can have and also especially its box <laughs> and I don't have that at all. Uh, people used to laugh last time I talked about it because I said it was like um, a brushing a little pony <laughs> you know <laughs> and not uh, like smelling the the box of a horse <laughs> because yes you have this powdery slightly animalic Swedish aspect to it but it's not like a super strong and potent um, animalic smell, you know, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> so, yes, definitely this one is more like a soft thread uh, enveloping with a beautiful, um, elegant iris on top. And I really enjoy that. So this one, yes, it, it has something quite cold and oaty like you can have in um, iris fragrances. But in its evolution, it's getting warmer with the woody notes, with the, the sweat, with the, this light powder of chocolate. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that one. I think it's a really great creation. It's a quiet fragrance in the sense that it's not projecting a lot. It's not going to be in your face. <laughs> but I really also enjoy this type of fragrances. And this is one that I really enjoy. Okay, now let's talk about my vanillas because, of course, with the, my last video, uh, I wanted more and more to wear vanillas because yeah, I talked about them recently. So uh, my first one was Arthur. So this is a fragrance by Ben Halligans. Yep. Oh, huge, huge cap. Maybe I can put it in the middle. Yes, it's focusing. So this one, I felt like I had to... I don't know, understand it more, spend more time with it because I wore it just a few times and uh, I wanted to understand it a bit more. <laughs> so I definitely wanted to spend more time with that one. And I feel like it doesn't have um, a strong evolution in the sense that what you have at the beginning is almost what you have at the end, but still I feel like it's smelling <laughs> super great. So this is an insensitive vanilla, but not one that is super challenging. I feel like Incensi Vanilla are quite hyped <laughs> lately. And this one to me is, uh, is a great one in the sense that it's not too challenging. I mean, incense notes to me can be quite challenging sometimes. And this one to me is not. I feel like, you know, a lot of people talk about Baby Cat. I talked about it also in my uh, previous video, but Baby Cat to me, I need to be in the mood for it because this is quite a strong fragrance. The, the incense can be quite challenging. And I feel like people around me can't be all pleased <laughs> about this fragrance. <laughs> so if I'm going to be surrounded by people um, during the whole evening or at work, for example, uh, for sure, I would not wear baby cat at all. But I feel like I would maybe wear that one <laughs> because I feel like this one is maybe a bit more discreet and would not 
but uh, more <laughs> people around me. Even if it has some projection, I mean, it's not a quiet fragrance like Icarus Rius, but still, I feel like it's quite moderate. And yes, basically, it's a vanilla incensive fragrance. I don't have much more from that, but still, it's enough to me because yeah, it's just beautiful and it's working for me. So I didn't ask for more. <laughs> okay, another one that I wore and that I adore is uh, Bois d'Armenie. So Bois d'Armenie by Guerlain. Uh, this is one that took me a long time, I feel like, to really appreciate like uh, it should. <laughs> and I fell in love with that one finally, I guess it was last year or the year before. Uh, and uh, at some point I just phew, couldn't stop thinking about that one. I wanted to get it and at some point, yes, I did. So <laughs> I feel like it's a perfect period of the year to wear this one. It's more quiet than uh, Arthur, but it's more complex, it's more elegant, it's more it's more everything to me. <laughs> I feel like it's more dense, it's richer, more complex. It projects less, it's more something that stays um, close to your skin. It's a bit less incense also, even if it is. It's super balmy, uh, balsamic, vanillic. The benzoin is really great. I mean, that's a benzoin bomb to me. But with a touch of incense, a touch of Gaia wood that makes it a little bit smoky. I don't know what it has also. I would say a touch of patchouli too. And a little, but little touch of iris in the opening. Yeah, this is how I see it. <laughs> but yeah, I'll smell it. But yeah. And yes, I feel like it's just super comfy. Uh, this is one that I could wear to stay home or to go out or go to the office. I feel like it's super versatile and it's just a really great fragrance. Even if it's complex, it's not something that people around you will uh, find um, unattractive or awful or <laughs> could not stand. I feel like this one is just, uh, yeah. Just perfect. Okay, so my next one is also a Guerlain, no surprise there. <laughs> and this is Angelique Noir. The surprise is that usually I, I like to wear this fragrance for spring. And I feel like it's working also really well for autumn, fall, uh, because yeah, it has this green opening that I really adore. I love the, the green opening of Angelique Noir. It has something crunchy in this angelic note that I really love. Slightly fruity, peppery also spicy, but not as spicy as Annie eh? because, yeah, you know, Annie, I can't stand that one because it's too spicy for my nose. It's like, it's too much. <laughs> I, I don't know, I just, if I smell that fragrance, I sneeze the same way I sneeze when I smell um, Vanny Avan, for example, which is great, okay, but so intense, so concentrated that my nose can't stand it. I mean, at some point, if you put uh, too much in a fragrance, my, my nose feel like um, you, you're aggressing it. So. <laughs> And that was the case for me with Annie. Okay, I closed the parenthesis, but okay, uh, Angelique Noir was, yeah, definitely one that I enjoyed to go out um, during the evening because it's quite strong. It projects moderately, I was going to say, but still it's a strong fragrance and it lasts for ages on me. Yes, and what I have after this uh, green opening, this spiciness, I have a beautiful uh, dark vanilla behind, which I really, really enjoy. It's a dark aromatic vanilla, not creamy at all, and it works really well with the green notes. I mean, this one is really, really great. So a great fragrance to to go out <laughs> during the, the fall season. Uh, it's working also really well for spring, but if it's too hot, I feel like it won't work because it's strong, but for fall, it's definitely really great. My next one is also a vanilla fragrance, and, and this is La Nuit de l'Orchidée by Pierre Guillaume. So this one, I have to say, is also one of my favorite vanilla fragrances. This is quite simple also, but well made. And this is a dark vanilla to me. This is a dark, aromatic, quite dry vanilla but with a hint of sweetness, just a hint of floral notes, 
maybe a hint of fruitiness. It has some spices. I think it's, again, like for Sa Majesté La Rose, you have the vanilla, but it's supported by other notes which emphasize each facet of the vanilla, and I feel like it's working really well. Yeah, almost also something green, fruity, dry, something that reminds me of sap also. I love all these different facets, um, and to me it's a spicy vanilla, but done really well. <laughs> Okay, so we arrived to the bottom of the list, or the bottom. I love these fragrances, definitely not a list. <laughs> but the last two that I wore, so the next one is Unspoken Musk by Francesca Bianchi. Oh, yes, this one, oh, yes, it's just gorgeous. I really love the DNA of her fragrances. And, you know, I, I love the way she creates uh, her fragrances, but I need, you know, I need to <laughs> to feel something with it, uh, to feel a connection. And I mean, uh, there were three of her fragrances that I really enjoyed, and Unspoken Musk is one of them, even if usually I don't like musk, but it has something super sensual, inviting, sweet also. It has a sweetness, but that is not too much or cloying. It's often on the uh, um, yes, it's often on the edge. I mean, in her fragrances, like in Tiger Tiger, her fragrances it has something that can turn cloying, but never go into that direction. I mean, it could, but it's not going there. But you feel like there is some sweetness, definitely, and something musky but like a dirty musk something something dirty that smells a little bit like skin and yeah <laughs> i don't know there is something a bit dirty behind something a bit dusty i have like powdery dusty feel from it in terms of texture that can be the immortal because i have like a sand texture when i smell that note usually i don't know it, it's really reminding me of scent <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> But yeah, maybe that's why I have that here too. Oh, and it's just gorgeous. This is one that I love to wear to go to bed because it's just enveloping and warm and sensual. I really love that one. And yeah, I feel like this one is going to follow me for the whole uh, fall winter season. And my last one, which is the one that I wore for Halloween. <laughs> is one that I wore also in November. So be get ready that I, about it because I'm going to talk to you about it also next month. And this is Ensemble Mythique by Guerlain. So I love this fragrance. This is one that definitely smells like me. I feel like, you know, sometimes you have a fragrance and you feel like, okay, this one is me in a bottle. And I really also have this uh, feeling with that one, with many fragrances, <laughs> because I have many that I, I feel like could be me in a bottle and this one is part of me in a bottle when i'm wearing a leather jacket i really like to wear that one so it's super spicy i feel like <laughs> if you don't like um, pepper get away from that one <laughs> because the opening is super peppery uh, i feel like maybe the most peppery fragrance that i have i don't i don't feel like maybe a hint of black pepper but mostly pink pepper that i have in that one it's a bit aldehydic also. Where do I get also? Um, definitely rose <laughs> and um, ambergris, which brings something a little bit dirty to the fragrance and attractive and yes, a bit animalic, but in a good way. I mean, <laughs> people feel like this fragrance is too animalic for them, but not to me. <laughs> There are some animalic notes that I can't stand, but definitely ambergris is one that is completely hypnotizing me, almost. <laughs> ambergris is a note that I love, I adore, and this is something that really attracts me in, uh, in fragrances. And to me, the, note, the, the name of the fragrance is a bit funny, because you have this impression, of course, of incense, but I feel like this is because of the pepper and because maybe of something leathery, like saffron or... 
maybe there is some leather in here or mixed with some patchouli or I don't know and uh, the ambergris that's giving me this incense feel maybe a bit more in the dry down but I feel like incense if it's in the fragrance I feel like yeah it may be here emphasized with the, the other notes I've just talked about this is not the start of the show here to me this is more the, the ambergris the rose uh, the pepper um but yes sometimes it's funny the the name that you choose it's not to me the the, the main uh, ingredients or material that i can get in in the fragrance so definitely one that is super potent it is strong it projects a lot it has uh, great longevity so if you are looking for a fragrance that smells like that and has great performance definitely try uh, ensemble mythique Okay, so now let's talk about the discovery of the months. Uh, maybe quickly before going into that, uh, I have, yes, which was a discovery and a, a new buy, <laughs> let's say. And this is a scented product. This is not a fragrance. And this one is Rose Cherry by Guerlain. So I already have their body lotion, body cream, uh, which is, yes, from Neroli Outre Noir. And I really enjoyed it. I feel like of course, if you um, use the fragrance and the body cream, the body lotion, it's going to perform better because your skin is less dry and you have also yeah, the scent of the body lotion, body cream and the, the fragrance. And I don't have rose cherry as a fragrance, but I thought that this one could work really well with some of my other rose fragrances, and it did. <laughs> it's working really well, for example, with the, La Petite Robe Noire. So if you have La Petite Robe Noire, if you have... Uh, this version, even with the Sherry Wood, it's working well. If you have any rose, almond fragrance, <laughs> or rose, even rose patchouli fragrance, uh, yeah, I feel like it's working well uh, with this type of, um, of fragrances. So, yeah, <laughs> this was uh, one of my purchases uh, for the month of October, and I'm still using it, uh, even sometimes just to go to bed or on my hands. Um, I really like that one. Okay, so now <laughs> let's talk about the discoveries. So I was saying I didn't have uh, many discoveries. I went to Paris at the beginning of October. I tried many things and there were not that many things that um, gave me a wow, <laughs> let's say. So the first one, okay, let's talk about this one first. I was able to get a sample of it, so maybe I can spray it and talk about that one. Yes, so this fragrance is uh, Praline en érable by Lame du Bois. And this one, I was able to get it at Jovoy. So, yes, fun fact, I went, uh, I bumped into Josephine <laughs> going <laughs> at Jovoy. So that was fun to see her in uh, real life, but she definitely looks the same <laughs> in real life. Okay, so Praline en érable. Yes, I really wanted to try that one because I tried uh, cognac, what was it, plum in cognac, uh, cognac en prune, <laughs> because they have a French name and an English name, so at some point I'm just mixing both, but okay, uh, the one with the plum and the cognac. I really enjoyed that one, but I don't know, it was missing a little bit, a little something for me to have, to be a love. And... I feel like I may prefer even that one. It's not like a gourmand fragrances in the sense like you could say, oh, okay, uh, praline should be really sweet and gourmand. No, it's quite dry. It's quite, it's like a gourmand fragrance, but for adults, I mean, it's not sweet, eatable, but you have this hint of a gourmand note behind, you know? So you definitely get the praline, but the praline is dry and not sweet. And you have also this woody base, which is gorgeous. I feel like it's smelling a barrel or smelling something a bit like alcohol in a barrel. Or you're going into a bar and you can smell the booze on the woody tables, on the furniture. I feel like I can smell the furniture the barrels on which you are, you are sitting, the alcohol on the table, and this little gourmandise behind, I don't know, but yes, it's really great, uh, well-made, and I, 
even um, make some people try that one. People who hate fragrances and usually they don't wear fragrances, they really don't like fragrances. And they really enjoyed that one. They said, oh, if they were to wear a fragrance, this would be this one. And I feel like it's saying a lot uh, about <laughs> about this fragrance. Okay, so for the other ones, I was not able to get samples. So yes, I didn't come by, come by with a lot of samples <laughs> from Paris. I was not even able to, able to, to buy samples. So yeah. Uh, and so the next one that I really enjoyed was Drunk Saffron. That's from that Korean brand. I think it's Born Now to Stand or Born to Stand Out, something like that. And then it got me really curious about the brand. So I feel like I'm, I want to get a discovery set of this brand because uh, Drunk Saffron was a great discovery. To me, it's really great saffron fragrance. And I found it super pleasing, super inviting. Um, yes great <laughs> so i really want to try more about uh, this brand and the brand that really got my full attention uh, during my trip this was really the little pepit i like to call them <laughs> like pepit what i discovered and really enjoyed during my trips to paris and it was a brand that was uh, in uh, printemps corner they like to change the brands and sometimes you have some smaller brands that you can discover there and the brand was Moth, I don't know how you pronounce that, Moth and Rabbit. So apparently it's a German brand. And the concept the concept is like they create fragrances uh, based on movies. So they take a movie and they create a fragrance uh, based on this movie. So definitely to me this was a great concept and a great surprise because what I really enjoyed in these fragrances is that they had a great evolution. I mean, what you have at the beginning is completely different from what you have in the end. It's really taking you into a journey and it's really go taking you through the movie, like through the, the scenario of the movie. And I really like that. So you had, for example, uh, La Haine. I don't know if you know, that's a French movie uh, about the, the suburbs around Paris and the, the life there for the teenagers. And you have this sweat smell from it, uh, which is super realistic. Like you could almost imagine um, these these young guys playing football in the middle of uh, uh, their, uh, their, their suburbs, and <laughs> it really smelled like that to me. So yes, it was really, really well made <laughs> to me. Well made in the sense that uh, it smells what it's supposed to smell, <laughs> and they really it represents really well the movie. Um, I tried The Lobster also, I really love that. Uh, it's also a great movie that I really enjoy by Yorgos Fantimos. So I really liked uh, this, um, yes, the movies that he is creating. I love The Favorite also. I would be super curious to have a, a fragrance based on this movie too. And um, yes, I really also enjoyed that one. It was, I think it was uh, fresh and airy and a bit marine in the opening and the evolution it was maybe getting a little bit more i don't really remember if it was green or animalic but uh, which is both can be <laughs> can take place in the movie so yes I, I thought it was great and the last one was uh, parasite which is a korean movie also and um, yes this this movie is uh, yeah if you haven't seen it i recommend you definitely to 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 watch the, the movies I've, I've just talked about and i don't want to spoil the, the the movie but i feel like um yes it definitely got also the some different aspects of the movie some specific scenes i had in mind when i i smelled the fragrance and i love this uh, olfactive experience definitely uh, this was something that i enjoyed and now i want to try uh, all the other fragrances and yes this was my best uh, discovery uh, when i went to paris this year okay so i hope that you enjoyed my favorites for this month of october tell me what you've been wearing this month if you've discovered also some fragrances and i hope to see you soon in my next video bye <music>